can I put a question to Andy? Um, I think we can prove, we've proved the sort of theoretical possibility of uh, these attacks, but I mean, how real are they um, out there in the real internet? It wasn't that long ago that I was sat um, opposite one of these demos uh, as the audience has been today. And to be honest, initially I just thought it was marketing hype and um, smoke and mirrors. I didn't really believe that um, they could uh, uh, evade an IPS as, as the demonstration indicated. Um, so basically I, I, I'm a pra I like, like my IPS, that's what I've been doing for 20 years. So one particular brand that I knew was fairly robust in its um, handling of signatures and protocols. I configured myself, I turned on every single signature um, put. Um, it, was, it wasn't practical in the real world, I blocked every single signature. I went into the settings, advanced settings, um, set the uh, normalization on full, uh, various other TCP settings in order to try and um, uh, detect the evasion and um, it went straight through. Still didn't believe it, so I went to Finland to take a look myself and actually see see the lab. Um, and yeah, I was, I was so impressed. Uh, we, we, we now run the Predator tool um, out, of our, out of our labs as well. Um, it, it is a real, th it is, uh, I think it is, yeah, it is still a real threat. Um, Andrew, um, have you seen any evidence of these techniques being used? Yes, I mean, as, as a forensic practitioner, you know, we get people who come to us and say, our systems have been compromised, figure out how they've been compromised. Um, we, we pull them apart and we, we figure out how systems have been done over, so to speak. And to some extent, you say, well, there's nothing new in this, in that it's an arms race. Hackers have always been interested in avoiding detection because if they can avoid detection, they don't get a knock on the door at three o'clock in the morning from an FBI police officer extradited to somewhere hot and sunny um, and spend 20 years in the federal penitentiary. Um, but I mean, yes, we have, right? And, and it is a constant arms race all the time. And, and, and um, why, why would someone use uh, one of these uh, techniques to, to get past the existing defenses, I guess? Well, because they want to avoid detection. Right, so I mean, so the, the nature of the the nature of the the, the crime has, has faced. I mean, we've all seen films like War Games, and you know, we all have this view of, yeah, you know, it, it, it's a 15-year-old kid in his bedroom. Well, it's not anymore. It's organised crime. It's serious. It's well-funded. You know, we're not into 15-year-old kids breaking into your systems because they say, hey, I can break into your systems. Although you still get a bit of that. No, now what we're talking about is organised crime breaking into systems, stealing information, selling information on the black market. There is a sophisticated criminal supply chain at work that's grown up over the last 10 years. And the purpose of, of organized crime is to make money. And they found a way to make money through compromising systems and selling information on the black market. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nira, um, who should be worried about this? If we talk about IETs, there are obviously advanced techniques, uh, and, and I actually commend Stonesoft for the work they've been doing over the past uh, few years. Um, in terms of who should be worried, uh, then it has to be those who will be publicly exposed for doing one thing or another, because you have to want it enough to use an advanced evasion technique. Uh, so I'm sure most of the audience will be familiar with the statistics in the Verizon DBIR report this year. And if you actually look at the conclusions of the report, they actually say uh, in the high 90s, I think, of, uh, of uh, successful attacks or d data breaches in the industry were not sophisticated. So after all, cybercrime is highly organized, it's industrialized, and they need basically to have return on investment for what they do. So why would cyber, cyber criminals go and spend a lot of money to attack organization when they can do it very simply through a SQL injection or a cross-site scripting attack? So that's one thing to consider. Secondly, uh, so that probably goes to the natural conclusion that, well, the cyber criminals that would be using AETs against organization will probably be targeting those organizations that have made an investment in information security and are secure enough and have secured the basics. And those very cyber criminals have motive and intent 
for attacking those organizations. So a roundabout way of answering your question, which is, um, uh, so governments, uh, high profile organizations uh, that uh, have perhaps expressed political uh, opinions or perhaps deemed non-ethical opinions and so on and so forth, but also where uh, cyber criminals can actually inflict real damage one way or the other. Uh, for example, SCADA systems, I can think if you actually want to target a particular country uh, and so on and so forth. But also, if we look again at the Verizon DBIR, uh, it is very apparent that more and more breaches, in fact, according to who you look at, 100% uh, of data breach actually involve third parties. And that's an interesting point because the organization I've just talked about are large and they've made an information in, um, an invest or substantial investment in information security. Now, if you look at data breaches that happen by the very large ones, on the main, they are actually targeting SMEs. So for a criminal targeting one SME doesn't give you the payload. It's small beer. You're not gonna target Mrs. Miggins pie shop. Uh, so, so essentially, if you target a third party with many thousands of customers, when you can actually get a payload, and if cyber criminals do their research, which they do, and target a very large third party, which potentially can be very secure because they have made the investment, because they are large, they actually can get to all of their customer pools. So I think perhaps that we'll start to observe that. I hope not. But what I'd like to do as well is actually uh, command stone stuff on that very good paper, which is uh, uh, APTs and AETs don't confuse the motivation with the method, so Ash, you're the man. Um, Nira, um, you, you mentioned the, the, the difference between AETs and APTs. I mean, how would you characterize that? Okay, so very easy again. I take no credit because Tonsoff defined this very, very well. But uh, uh, going back to what we've observed in 2011, 2011 was undeniably the year of the hack. So uh, if we all agree that breaches are a statistical certainty, it's not the case of whether you're going to be attacked, you're being attacked now, it's what you do with it. So if we consider this, then what's an APT? Basically, an APT is nothing new. An APT is a motivation. If somebody wants to get you enough, then they will. It's what you do with it. So they will try and try again, and they will start by trying certain methods and using certain tools. Criminals will always go for the path of least re resistance. So if they, can get, if they can get you, as I said earlier on, through a SQL injection or cross-site scripting or anything of that nature as defined by the OWASP top 10, then they will because they don't need to actually expand any more effort on doing that. So, uh, so going back to APT, APTs is basically the motivation. It's, you know, the people that want to get you, the organization, the governments, whatever they are. An AET is essentially a set of tools, techniques uh, that, that the criminals would, would use. And they are not necessarily APTs. It may be that criminals are motivated enough to actually get you through an AET.